Hey everybody, Lauren Cohen here again. Welcome back to my channel where I show you everything I know about how to unleash your soul through the power of jazz. Now, as always, remember to smash that like button and subscribe if you like what you're seeing here so I can build this channel and get the algorithm to send my video to more jazz lovers like you. Now, in today's video, I wanna talk about practicing. I wanna talk about my concept of practicing and essentially just go through with you my practice guide for the jazz bassist. This is a PDF and video bundle series that's been downloaded by thousands of bass players all over the world. And I just wanna walk you through some of the key concepts. You can also download this PDF for free and this video bundle for free. The link is in the description below. So let's check out my practice guide. So when I think about practicing, I think about what I call practice bursts. I remember when I was growing up and even up until a few years ago, I always thought that the only way to practice is to practice eight, 10, 12 hours a day. My mom was a classical violinist and she would always regale me with, so-and-so used to practice 15 hours a day. Can you believe that? And then I used to hear, of course, all the stories about Charlie Parker and Coltrane practicing 12, 15 hours a day. And certainly there are many people that are capable of doing that. I have never been one of them. And from my experience, many of my students aren't capable of practicing 8, 10, 12 hours a day. This is for so many reasons, not the least of which, who just has that kind of time? Now, certainly if you're in college, if you're in music school, you probably do have that kind of time. But even then, if you do have that kind of time, most people think, and most studies are even showing now, that after about an hour and a half, our brain starts to lose its focus. And I'm sure that you could probably relate to that. I know that I can. So because of this, I developed this idea of a practice burst, just using small little bursts of practicing, 15, 20 minutes throughout the day. We'll talk more about these practice bursts in a second, but let's just go through this guide a little more here. So on the side here, I just have some little tips that you've probably heard before. Always practice what you can't do currently, right? We wanna practice what we can't do. We don't just wanna be noodling around. Playing and just noodling around having fun is absolutely essential to what we do every day with our instrument, but we really wanna focus on working on the things that we can't do. Another little truism here, but I just thought I'd put it up here, is remember that practice is about the repetition of perfection. So we wanna make sure that what we're practicing, when we're repeating the actual task at hand, that we're doing that as perfectly as possible. If we're practicing something that isn't working, that's sloppy, then that's the sort of thing that's gonna come out in our playing. And third here, slow practice is effective practice. Again, going back to my childhood, I remember my mom screaming at me that I was practicing too fast. And even to this day, I have to catch myself when I'm practicing and sometimes I practice too fast and I know for so many of my students this is such a problem that we have to work on all the time. You've probably heard all of your teachers tell you this a million times but I'm going to tell you it again. Practice as slowly as possible. The only way to work something up fast is by practicing it properly slow. Now before we get into these secrets I've got down here, let's just talk about the idea of practice bursts and this idea of optimizing our limited practice time. If you've got family, if you've got kids and obligations like that, adulting is really hard, it takes a lot of your time, and you may not have more than 15, 20 minutes to practice a day. If you focus on consistency, you can really develop and grow a lot. So I have a Leonard Bernstein quote here, I'm a huge Lenny Bernstein fan, and he said, to achieve great things, two things are needed, a plan and not enough time. So the idea here is really getting at the idea that we're not really gonna get anything done unless we have a plan, unless we're planning, and that actually not having a lot of time can work to our benefit. The fact that we don't have 12 or 15 hours a day can focus the little periods of time that we have to great effect. And now let's get on to my three secrets for practicing. These are things that I like to employ in my practicing that maybe you haven't heard anywhere else. Number one, I like to really incorporate my DAW, my digital audio workstation. Now, that could be GarageBand, that could be Pro Tools, that could be Logic, but something where I can record myself, where I can record backing tracks for myself, play along to those tracks, and record myself playing along to those tracks. If I'm practicing with acoustic bass, I have my microphone with electric bass, go right direct into the system, but I like to set it up like it's a recording session. This not only helps me with my practicing, gives me the feedback I need to hear how I sound, but this also prepares me for recording when everything's under the microscope. And personally, I like to have that experience as much as possible so that I'm ready and feel comfortable in the recording studio. So secret number one, get a DAW, a digital audio workstation, even if it's as simple as GarageBand, and use it. And now, secret number two, the heart of this idea of the practice burst. So practice in short 
bursts, 15, 20 minute periods throughout the day. Now, this not only is gonna be easier for you to focus, but the thing I love about this is that it also sort of gamifies practicing. Gamification is something that's real popular now in, in education and in music education. The idea of putting on a stopwatch and seeing how focused you can stay until that stopwatch runs out is sort of a game. I used to run a lot of when I was running. I could only do it when I would set my timer. It was a way of sort of just giving me a beginning and an end of sort of time boxing my work. Now secret number three here is just basically the idea of committing. Commit to a schedule by planning times to practice daily, even if these practice sessions aren't small chunks. We just talked about small chunks. Then show up and put in the work even if you're not in the mood. So when you download my free practice guide, you're gonna get in my three video bundle series, you're gonna get a video about basically putting in the work, about the mindset of practicing. And in that video, I talk about the idea of just showing up even when you're not inspired to essentially sort of throw the idea of inspiration out the window and just commit to showing up every day, tightening up your boots and just putting in the work. You'll learn more about that in the video mindset. The next thing I give you here in the practice guide is a practice routine. Now this is a 90 minute practice routine, but this can be reduced to your practice burst. Each one of these can be broken down into a single practice burst that you do throughout the day, or if you can handle it, it can all be done in one full session, but each of these can be broken down into short practice bursts. Now practice burst one on upright bass, your first session has to be some sort of bowing. Bowing in the instrument is going to open it up, it's going to get all the overtones resonating, all the harmonics resonating, really going to open up that wood so it's going to be easier to play. It's also going to help us with our long tones, getting a good sound, and developing our left hand. On bass guitar, this first session could be something having to do with hand coordination. So getting both of our hands lined up and working together is essential. A great thing to do with this is playing chromatic scales on each string with your right hand varying the pizzicato combinations, one finger, two finger, three finger combinations with a chromatic scale is a great way to start. But you can use any scale to start this first session. Now our second practice burst of the day should be focused on the main thing that we're expected to do as bass players, which is lay down on the groove. If you're focusing on jazz playing, use this time to transcribe a bass line. Transcribe two bars of a bass line. Imagine if you did that every day for a month, every month you'd have almost a full baseline of a 32 bar standard jazz tune. Now just those two practice bursts could be enough just to keep your playing strong and to up level your playing with consistency every day. If you have a little more time and you want to add another practice burst, then the next thing would be to focus on some soloing. Same concept here. If you transcribe two bars of a solo every day, you'd have a solo at the end of a month, essentially, if we're talking about a standard 32 bar tune. And then your next practice burst here could be working on scales and arpeggios. This is the building blocks of our bass playing, really the building blocks of Western music, and especially on the upright bass, scales and arpeggios are so essential to what we do, to playing in tune, to developing our sense of the real estate of the instrument of where all the notes lie, and so scales and arpeggios are essential. That could be an additional practice burst. Now for my practice burst five, I have learn a new tune. Now actually, since I've written this, I would probably put this practice burst higher on the ranking in terms of priority. Learning tunes and learning melodies is probably the most important thing that we can do to develop as jazz musicians. Especially as bassists, if we want to develop our ability to solo and things like that, learning melodies on the instruments is essential. And learning tunes, memorizing chord changes, memorizing melodies, forms, is going to be essential not only for developing our understanding and our musicianship as jazz artists, but to getting more gigs. You're not going to get any gigs if you don't know any tunes. This is also the kind of thing where working with your DAW comes really in handy. Put that MP3 into your DAW, put on your headphones, play along with it, record it. You'll get a real sense of how you sound. That's also going to help you to memorize and ingrain that tune so you don't need iReal B or the Real Book. And finally, at the end here, I just mentioned something that's really important that the power of this regimen or any practice regimen is the compounding nature of it. That sticking to it over time and staying consistent with your practicing is going to be the key. So that's my concept for practicing in a nutshell. And remember, you can get this PDF as well as the three videos that come with it by clicking on the link in the description. And of course, most importantly, you gotta have fun with this. If your practicing isn't fun, you're not gonna stick to it. And if you're not feeling inspired, there's probably a reason why. You're probably just not having a lot of fun. Until next time, have fun and practice well.